So this is a video that I had to do for school a little while ago on oceanography on coral bleaching. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Ah! Oh, and I made salmon A's in it, so watch out. Enjoy. Coral reefs are turning white and dying. And also this hour, the Great Barrier Reef is at a terminal stage. Dear future generations, I think I speak for the rest of us when I say, sorry. You can sit here. Or you can act. And this is close to, or you've thought, the greatest tragedy of our time. Dying. We're talking about 33 years away. 33 years till the mass destruction of an entire ecosystem. And we'll be kicking ourselves in the blue arse. Why did we do nothing? You have to be kidding yourself if you don't think that humans had an effect on dying coral reefs to some degree. We... we knew about this. The evidence is there, yet humans are too ignorant to look at the evidence and act. Because as humans, if it doesn't affect us, then we will not act. We have two books inside of us. One that is the economic, and one that is natural. The doesn't survive. The reef will not survive. As Joe Chandler puts it in his essay, Great Barrier Reef, there's nature, the Great Barrier Reef in a sense, and then there's the economy, humans in a sense. And ironically, the Queensland government just passed legislation to put a coal mine run by Guatemadani right next to the Great Barrier Reef. We're at a time now where we must choose do we want the Great Barrier Reef, which is nature, or do we want the economy, which is the coal mines, the fossil fuels? But we can only have one, and we need to find a delicate balance between the two, and which one we value more. Earlier that this may not affect you, but you may need to think again. The death of coral reefs could affect tens of millions of people. Fishermen will be out of business. We will not have any seafood as the ecosystems rely on each other. So when one thing is taken out, this being the coral reefs, the whole ecosystem suffers as a result. Corals provide shoreline protection, so coastal areas may become inundated with water and suffer from other natural disasters on a more prevalent scale. This would cause an economic disaster to much of the world's population. We now know that activities like burning fossil fuels coral and sand mining, land and urban construction, destructive fishing methods, inadequate waste management and deforestation are leading to the death of coral reefs. Luckily, there is hope. If we do things like conserve water, help reduce pollution, research what you put on your lawn, dispose of trash properly, we can stop coral bleaching. So the main thing is, if we can stop putting greed over nature and we realise what we're doing and we stop climate change, we stop this temperature change, there is hope. We can stop coral bleaching, but if we don't stop soon, no matter what we do, we cannot stop coral bleaching. Time is of the essence. Thank you, you made it to the end of the video. Uh, the winner of the giveaway is Carson Newton. So thank you for everyone that entered and I'll be sure to do some giveaways in the future. So please ask me questions, engage, comment. We're all human. And thank you, thank you for watching. You know, climate change, it's a big issue. 
Great Barrier Reef. This is a big issue. This affects us. As Australians, we're going to see problems within the economy if we lose the Great Barrier Reef. I guess adversely, if we cut out the coal mines, we're going to see issues with that as well. But, there's not a renewable source of Great Barrier Reef, of coral reef. There is, however, a renewable source of energy, you know, solar, wind, there's all kinds of renewable energy, but this coal would only last for around 200 years and it'll be completely gone. We have to make the choice because we can't have the two, so um, peace out.